Hello, and welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, joined once again by Vivian Hudson. And? And, <laughs> and Mr. Robert Castaneda. So this is the second podcast in our series of Robert Castaneda uh, interviews. And this topic, we were going to cover something that this is a pattern that you see throughout nature this is a pattern that we see throughout business there's something called the pareto principle you might refer to it as the 80 20. 80 20 rule but what separates the good from the great because if you look at any organization there are always there's the the good people who are making a hundred thousand bucks in this business like the, the, you know the subpar people who are making half that But there's a minor difference between the good and the great, and those great people are making 10 times more than the good people. So, Robert, I'm giving you the ultimate flattery by putting you in that that 1% up there. But what we really want to find out is what are some of the things that separate the good from the great? Thanks, Mike. Um, What a great honor. I'm honored to be uh, in that class. I'm humbled, and I will take it with the greatest humility but I accept the classification. <laughs> so it's a great, it's, you know, I see this, ev- I wouldn't say every day because I'm not out in the field every day, but I'm almost out ev- in the field every day. And I do see what separates good from great on a daily basis, not just from our side as, as reps, ancillary reps, but also in the clinic and so on. And I'll get to that in a second. But for us, for ancillary reps, what separates good from great? You know, ancillary industry is, is, is such a wonderful free industry we're not bound like uh, Merck and Zimmer where we had standard operating procedures and we had to memorize certain things to pitch and that's all we had was that scope we have basically anything and everything that we can offer at a clinic level or a specialty level to programs that can help but I practice certain key things on a daily basis one very important thing that I try to do a hundred percent of the time is practice fanatical integrity And why I'm saying that before saying uh, always follow through is because doctors are pitched, I don't know how many times a day by people like us. They could be uh, pharma reps, they could be device reps, they could be service reps, they could be ancillary reps, all, but doctors all they see is reps. So what separates us from the rest or what separates the good just following status quo and really super achieving? Doctors say, I really like this, I wanna know more. Some reps see that as just passing them off. They were not really interested. They're going to move on to the next doctor. What I do is I come back and say, okay, doc, how much time? Do you want white paper? Because there's oodles on this. Do you want, uh, do you want to know what some performance? Maybe you want me to make some, some, some uh, examples for you and get a call of action. And I literally either make a mental note, but usually I'll dictate it in my phone because I don't have time to write it. And then I'll go and actually execute those follow-throughs and come back and give it to him in a timely fashion. Then, he's, then I start building that trust with him, he's like, well, this guy can really execute. In ancillary business, execution's everything. You, if you think the doctor that you're meeting and you're uh, pr- proposing a, an ancillary service to them, all they're wondering is if the ancillary service is, is, a, good, is a good service that you're uh, proposing. They're not. They're looking at you. They're vetting you. They're examining you. They're wondering if this person can actually pull it off. Can they execute? Can I trust them? with my ancillary business because it's, for some t- clinics, it's a significant amount of, of, of their uh, monthly proceeds. So to be great is to do everything and more for the doctor in your clinic. And that gets you that seven figure a year. Yes, everything and more. So it's a lot about building trust, which I heard you say trust. So how do you establish trust with your doctors? Like, I know that you mentioned, like, following through, but yes. how, do, how do you cement that from the first day that you make contact? So, I, I do it in a couple of ways. One, I, I, I am, in, in some cases, I am a name dropper. If I have a doctor that has referred me to this doctor, I will then use that name to establish that I have a history already. But if I don't, and I'm completely new, cold calling a completely new area, then that first conversation I have with the uh, physician or the clinic manager or so on, whatever they give me, whatever tasks they give me or open and uh, open questions that weren't answered completely, I follow through immediately. And when I say immediately, within the next 24 to 36 hours, whenever I can get my vendors or anyone else in the industry like Mike or Viv or, or if sometimes I'm the reference, if I get Robert in time to, you know, I'm using that as an example, uh, but try to get back to him as soon as possible to establish that, hey, I'm 
my word. In this business, we don't really have contracts. Yes, we have service agreements and we have other things, but your word is absolutely by far so important in this business. So if you can follow through with your word, that's one daily habit that I follow. How do you go about tracking your interactions that you have? How do you make sure that you're on top of your business? You mentioned follow through is everything. Um, active listening, making sure you're, you're understanding what it is that they're looking for and making sure that you're, you're following through on that. How do you organize this though? How do you know that you're staying on top of everybody and not letting money slip through the cracks? Because that's what I see a lot between the good and the great. The good let money fall through the cracks constantly. Absolutely true. And, and early on in the, in the podcast, I, I mentioned that some, some reps will listen to the doctor. And the doctor says, well, I like this, but they take that at, but I need more information. They take that as a no. And even straight out no's just mean I need more information. I'm just, that's very simple sales tactics and strategy. So how do I keep track? So every clinic, every call I make, just like doctors, maximizing the energies. When they're walking from one room to their doctor, I tell them, Every step in your clinic should have a monetary value. Your time is precious, doctor. So is ours. So when I go to a clinic, I have a goal. I, I set myself little goals in the car. This is what I'm gonna get through today. I'm gonna get through the office manager or I'm gonna get to the front desk and the office manager. I'm gonna answer those questions to get me closer to getting them started. So my, how I track it is how, cl how close am I to getting them started on that program? And, um, and doing everything I possibly can within a fairly short amount of time to help them transition or help them start the program. Um, that's really all I do. It's very simple. It's not rocket science here. It's paying attention. Pay attention to your customer. They are our customers. They're always, always, especially the doctor. They're the boss and they're always right. And if they see that you appreciate them for that, believe me, that goes oodles, it goes miles. So with being an ancillary rep, one of the things that I've heard you talking about is how you build value. So when you're engaging in conversations with your physicians, questions I think are always the key element in helping to pull out what challenges a physician is facing. So do you have perhaps a couple of key questions that you use with your physicians to help you understand their business better or really find out the heart of the matter for them? So yes, great question, Vivian. Uh, one of the things after establishing a rapport is I ask the doctor, what are your goals, doctor, for your practice? Where do you feel you're lacking? What areas are you lacking in? Let me see if I can help you, doctor. Ancillaries means many things. It's not just labs. It's not just DNA. It's not just prescription medications. But we have hardware. We have insurance things. We have patient financing. We have CCM stuff. We have all these things that we have immunotherapy. We have all these other little programs that can be substantial. But let me help you fill in these blanks, doc. Little by little. Okay? Sometimes they like tow and water. I say, you want a TIW, doc? What is that? It's tow and water, doc. Let's try a little bit at a time. And once you want to go, then we'll go, you know, um, AI, all in. <laughs> okay, and it's usually once you start uh, uh, performing and um, solidifying one and you, you prove yourself, uh, it really opens the door in clinics. I, myself, from my experience, now my clients, when I tell them I have a new program, it's, it's not sight unseen accepted, but almost. Or, Doc, I have something that's really viable. It fits in your medical scope, necessity. I need, I need, to see, I need you for five minutes so I can show you. So. so that leads me into my last point, which you had touched upon, which is asking the physician what their goals are. And my goal is to help you achieve your goal, as cheesy as that sounds. That's what we're here for. And I think one of the major things, if I were to point to one thing that separates the good from the great in this business, I see a lot of people that they pick up a new product every three or four months and they get a new business card and a new email address and this and that. Well, what happened to that other thing you were selling? That was four products ago. Now I'm onto this one. It's not a good look for you. And you had mentioned earlier in the call, what are they sizing up? They're sizing up the program and the billing codes, yeah, but they're also sizing up, are you the guy who's gonna be able to execute this and actually pull it through? So I think you add a lot of value by uh, presenting it to the doctor as 
I don't care what you do. I'm here to explore all the different options you have within the ancillary sector, let you know what's out there. You need more information about the science. I'm here to get it for you. You need a billing code. I'm here for you. When it comes time to implementation for implementation, I'm here holding your hand, making sure everybody knows what they're doing. So I think that is probably the uh, most important point here. I, I think this is fair to say, Robert, you, you're not going to make a million dollars in this business by closing 150 doctors. You're going to get it by getting eight guys who will do go to hell and back with you. Would you say that that is more your philosophy in terms of who you're going to be working with, how many clients you take on? Yes, quality over quantity every day of the week. Every day of the week. Imagine, just for a second, Mike, you brought up something that it, it brought a really good feeling through my mind and everything when you said you're not going to make your million dollars a year by having 51 clinics. You're going to make it by eight key clinics or doctors. Imagine that just for a second. Where else? I'm sure there are other industries, but where else with eight clients can you make a million dollars a year? It's just finding the right ones. With no prior experience. With no prior, I know, isn't that something? You're talking that's legal, too. That's perfectly legal. Because uh, Freeway Ricky Ross has something to say about that. <laughs> See, and there it is. <laughs> that's right. Well, Robert, thank you again for your philosophy here on, on what separates the good from the great. I think this is, this is very useful info. Um, I hope you guys take something from this. And, and you know, the, the key is you hit it on the head. I, I hate that the secret's getting out there. I don't like that you're given the secret that this really isn't rocket science. This really is about hustle and showing up and being attentive and active listening and having your focus on the customer. And you're going to win for sure. Thanks, Robert. Absolutely. Thank you.